grade school was different for us. When we started school in 1935 in kindergarten, the elementary schools were segregated. But when we moved to junior high school, they were desegregated, as was the high school, except for a couple of notable segregations in high school. One was that we had two basketball teams, the uh, Topeka High School Ramblers, which was an all-black team, and the Topeka High Trojans, which was an all-white team. The two segregations were the basketball teams and the all-school parties, as I recall. Those were separate. One of the things that I amuse myself with, now I get my yearbooks out and I look, and I can see the vestiges of, and I don't want to say racism, but someone's differences of how we look at things. Mm -hmm. Let me just take the picture of the basketball teams. When I look at the Trojan in my 49 yearbook, they're all single photos of guys, you know, in a position doing something. Then when I go to the pages where the Ramblers are, there's only a group picture. Mm. <laughs> now, let me say this about the Ramblers. We had grand experiences being Ramblers. You know, we had the, the, the little differences when we would go on the road. Sometimes uh, we were not able to eat in a restaurant, mm. but we knew that before we went. That was a sign of the time. Let me tell you a good story, though. I was a pretty decent basketball player then. I think it was in my junior year I decided, uh, well, I'm not going to play basketball this year. I want to be a cheerleader. Well, you had to have B average to be a cheerleader. <laughs> so I had to go back to playing basketball. <laughs> I've lived such a charmed life. I've been the right rat at the right hole at a lot of the right time. I joined the Navy, and, and, and the one story I want to tell you is that as you know, Buddy Peterson's father had ran a TV repair shop. So we spent a lot of time learning communications. So I'm graduating boot camp in San Diego, getting ready to go to our next duty station. And I look on the board and I see where I'm going to something called storekeeping school. So I talked to the chief and I said, what is this? And he said, Jack, don't, don't, don't fuss, don't fuss, don't fuss. Uh, you'll be one of the earlier blacks that will get to go to storekeeping school, take care of supplies and that kind of thing. And I questioned him. I said, you know, don't they look at our background? I said, you know, I've got a background in communication. He said, oh, yeah, they know that. And I said, you mean I can get killed doing other things in the Navy, but I can't get killed in your communication station? He said, Jack, let me tell you something. This is 1952. The military was desegregated in 1948. The United States Navy don't know it yet. The thing that I told him was, look, if you can get me the opportunity just to take the test. I don't care how many people take it. If I don't finish in the top 5%, I'll be the best doorkeeper the United States Navy's got. He had to open the door. I couldn't open the door. I had skills. He opened the door. I spent my four years in the United States Navy in communications. Yeah, good, for you. <laughs> good for him. I couldn't have made it without him. I've just been a mouthy guy all my life. You know, uh, I was elected, what, to the city government in 1972. Awfully proud of that. Awfully proud to be the first black ever elected in the city of Topeka. You opened a lot of doors because... Of my mouth, huh? <laughs> I just hope that in the years down, someone will look and say, well, you know, if that guy from East Topeka could have done that, I can do this. Well said.